Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial equation. You can also call this a functional equation since polynomials are also functions. So p of x is a polynomial and we're going to be solving for p of x. The equation is p of x plus 1 minus p of x equals x and we're going to try to find p of x. All right, so let's take a look at this expression. Since p of x is a polynomial, we have limited options here. It can't be 1 over x, it can't be a radical function, it's just going to be a polynomial. So that makes it easier to solve. So what kind of polynomial uh, we have? Uh, when it comes to polynomials, one of the things we need to talk about is degree. So is this a linear polynomial? Let's test it out. For example, if can px be something like mx plus p, right? I'm just testing it out. Well, in this case, I should be getting p of x plus 1 as mx plus m plus b. And if you subtract these expressions, you're going to notice that everything pretty much cancels out and you end up with the constant m, right? So it can't be equal to a variable. So obviously this shows that uh, p of x cannot be linear. But this gives us an idea. If you have a linear function, the first differences basically uh, are going to be constant. All right. Uh, so, but our difference is not constant in this case, right? So the first differences are not constant. But if you think about this, since the differences are linear, then that means the second differences are constant, right? That tells us something. And it means that P of X must be a quadratic function. Why? Because for a quadratic function, the second differences are constant. So you can test it out. For example, suppose you have p of x equals x squared. Let's go ahead and make a quick table, like an xy table. For 1, it's 1. For 2, it's uh, 4. For 3, it's 9. And then for 4, it's going to be 16. Great. Now let's go ahead and look at the first differences. We have a 3, we have a 5, we have a 7. Notice that the first differences are increasing by 2. That's arithmetic. And if you look at the second differences, the differences of differences, then you notice that they're going to be constant. And this is true for all quadratic functions. So p of x needs to be in this form. And you're going to notice that if you assume that p of x is cubic or higher, uh, it's just not going to work. So let's go ahead and evaluate p of x plus 1 from here replacing x with x plus 1. We get the following. Let's go ahead and simplify p of x plus 1, and then from that we're going to subtract p of x. So if you distribute, you get x squared plus 2x plus 1, and then here you get bx plus b plus c, and I'm going to subtract a x squared bx and c from this. And the answer is supposed to equal x. Let's go ahead and distribute. Notice that ax squared cancels out, so we end up with no quadratic term. That's critical uh, because we should end up with uh, something linear. And then we get 2ax from here plus a plus bx plus b plus c, so this cancelled out and then uh, minus bx, that the bx also cancels out obviously, and the c also cancels out, a lot of things cancel out, so that's good, bx cancels out, c cancels out, and we end up with something like this, 2ax plus a plus b is equal to x. Now, this is true for all values of x, since these are both polynomials, and this is a you know, general equation, so we can safely say that the coefficient of x needs to be the same on both sides. So here, uh, 2a needs to equal 1, which means that a is equal to 1 half, and a plus b. Now, there is no constant on the right-hand side, therefore, a plus b needs to be 0, which in indicates that b equals negative 1 half. So we were able to find the values of a and b, but our goal is to solve for p of x, and we assume that p of x can be written as a quadratic. But notice that we don't really have any particular value for c here, right? We didn't get anything for c because c basically cancelled out. What is that supposed to mean? What that means, c can be anything. So let's go ahead and write this down. So p of x can be written as ax squared, remember, plus bx plus c. And we didn't really get anything for c. So c can be anything, or c. Uh, you see how c works? Uh, that's going to give me 1 half x squared minus one half x plus c. Now, this should be the general solution, but is there a way 
we can check this out, right, that by substitution. Well, let's go ahead and test it out in our original problem, which was p of x plus 1 minus p of x equals x. Let's go ahead and substitute this, and you're going to notice that pretty much everything cancels out. So 1 half x plus 1 squared minus 1 half x plus 1 minus... 1 half x squared minus 1 half x. Oh, by the way, I forgot to put the c here, but they're going to cancel out anyways. So the c cancels out. That means that c pretty much can be anything here. And if you go ahead and subtract these two things, you're going to get 1 half times this minus that, which is 2x plus 1. And then these two are going to give you basically um, negative 1 half times x plus 1 plus x. Uh, and that should be, so it's going to be like this, negative 1 half x minus 1 half plus 1 half x. And these two are going to cancel out, leaving us with just negative 1 half. Okay, so uh, now at this point, we can just go ahead and, you know, distribute everything. Uh, if we do, we're going to get and c canceled out. So that's going to be x plus 1 half minus 1 half, leaving us with x. So our solution is actually correct and this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.